Hi folks, Canadian Prepper here. Today's video is not going to be a World War III update. We're going to save that for later tonight. I'll release a video probably a bit later. But uh, today I want to talk about the price of food. We just got word from a distributor that the price of the stuff you see behind me is about to skyrocket. The reason why we store so much of this stuff here at CanadianPreparedness.com is because it's like currency. Uh, the price of it only goes up in value. In fact, this mountain house that you see behind me here has gone up in price nearly 30% in the past two years, plus the shrinkflation, which is about 10%. So you can see on the box there, there's a certain amount of grams in each box, right? That has reduced significantly over the past two years. And we've just been told that Mountain House is getting ready to crank its prices by 10 to 15% again. Now guys, something big happened this morning on the Black Sea with Russia and Ukraine and Turkey. They had this grain deal. They were supposed to secure passage for ships through this established corridor, this neutral zone. While well, the Russians are saying that the Ukrainians have violated that by attacking some of the ships that were supposed to be protecting the grain ships. And now that deal is, is off. It's no more. That means that all of that grain, a significant amount of grain that the Ukrainians were going to bring to market to ease grain prices is not going to be there. So that isn't even what's being factored in to Mountain House. Grain is a staple of almost any type of uh, freeze dried meal because there is, you know, typically some carbohydrate that accompanies it. But we've also seen the price of grain nearly quadruple since the year 2000. We've seen um, the price of wheat skyrocket, uh, especially earlier this year. It's come down a bit now, but now it's going to go back up to where it was. And we're talking like 2008 color revolution bread riot type levels. And it's probably going to be a lot worse than that because of the energy crisis. Now, right now, Europe is in a bit of a supply glut with respect to liquid natural gas. And what I mean by that is they've filled all their reservoirs. They're no longer getting Russian gas. They're getting a bit through a couple pipelines, but not nearly enough to meet their needs throughout the winter. So they're going to start depleting their reservoirs quickly. Now, they have all these ships at port waiting to offload their LNG. They can't because all of the reservoirs are full. And thanks to climate chaos, uh, the, it's still been a fairly mild winter so far. Obviously, winter hasn't really started yet in a lot of places. But you know what I mean? The temperature hasn't dipped that far below zero yet. Now, I try to explain this to people in a simple way and the, the easiest way I can explain it with respect to the crisis Europe is about to be in because right now you're seeing this boomerang effect where the price of gas is dipping below zero just like it did during COVID when you had all those tankers on the water and nobody could offload uh, for a variety of reasons it actually you know it actually cost you money to have oil and natural gas at that point it dipped into negative levels. Well, that's happening again, but that's only extremely temporary. Uh, that is going, there's going to be a whole different story come this time next year. This time next year, the price of natural gas is probably going to, it's definitely going to reach record levels because what's going to happen is that Europe relies on the constant flow of gas through the pipelines that LNG stored in reservoirs is supplementary. It's, it's a strategic reserve. It's not meant to be the primary source. So yes, there are ships that are backed up at port right now, but come January, that's not going to be the case. And come January, it's going to be like a guy who's traveling through the Sahara Desert, okay? And he loads up on as much water as he can beforehand. He loads up his camels, he drinks himself to death nearly, and his camel as well. And just 1% into the trip, he moves from a water abundance and uh, being waterlogged to water scarcity within the first 1%, first leg of the trip. That's exactly what's going to happen with the LNG situation. So the price of food is going up, guys. That's coming in about a month's time. I would advise you to stock up. Don't buy the crap because, look, if you're going to buy the crap, if you're going to buy the you know, 30-day buckets that nobody's ever going to eat. Like the, I don't want to name the brands because I don't want to incur any sort of legal complications, but you might as well just get 
mylar bags. We got a crap ton of mylar bags. We've been stocking up on all food related stuff. We got mylar bags, we got oxygen absorbers. Just take your ass down to, what is it? One of the um, rest, where the places where the restaurants shop, not Costco, but like a real Canadian wholesale or something like that. Pick up a few bags of rice, some beans. It's incredibly cheap right now still. I mean, it's a lot more expensive than it was, but it's still relatively cheap. Do that. You don't have to get in. This is really, this is for Richie Rich, okay, to be brutally honest, or it's supplementary. Like for myself, this is supplementary. This isn't my mainstay. I'm not going to be eating freeze-dried every day in the apocalypse. I'm going to be eating rice and beans and occasionally mix some of this really tasty stuff in. Now, let's just walk and talk around the shop here. I got a few more things I want to show you guys. I'm not sure if you guys know, there's some big things that have been happening on the nuclear war front. We're going to talk about that later today. We got some Harvest Right freeze dryers. I think we got about 40 in stock right now. This is something that's incredibly cost effective. I think we got about a thousand of these. These are the water bob, okay? And uh, this is something that you would put in your bathtub. It's great for if you live in an apartment or if you live in a smaller dwelling where you don't have a lot of water storage on hand, this is something you can throw it in your closet. If you never use it, it's not a big deal because it doesn't cost that much. I think they're around 30 bucks or something like that. Now, what you do is you put it in your bathtub. If an emergency strikes, you fill it with water and that's going to prevent any airborne contamination, especially if you're still utilizing your commode in your washroom. You know you don't want all of that airborne nasty particulate flying into your water and then you know risk stuff growing in it so it's just better to have it encapsulated i would still advise people to use some sort of uh, water purification droplets chlorine bleach calcium hypochlorite uh, also known as pool shock that will do the trick but you can't go wrong with a water bob this is really should be a mainstay in everybody's uh, emergency preparedness kit. We also got a lot of winter well stoves. We've been stocking up because we knew that winter was coming. So we also have Nor Tent coming in. And all this stuff, guys, it's taken years to get like VanQuest. Uh, VanQuest is one of the premier backpacking manufacturers, I would say, in the world. And they've only been able to get like four or 500 packs made of their VanQuest pack this year, the Markour. So we got about 60 of those. Now you see behind me, this has taken a long time. These are handmade real fur mitts by Fernand the Fur Guy made locally. And we've been accumulating this all year. You're the first to see it now. We've been keeping this secret because I know that this beautiful array of furs is gonna fly out the door after I release this video. Uh, we sold out, I think, in probably a few days last time. And I think Fernand almost killed himself, to be brutally honest, sewing. So we've been stockpiling it all year. We know it's gonna be a rough winter. We can't export this stuff overseas, unfortunately. But this is the, these are the world's warmest mitts. Like I've talked about furs, and wool blankets are another thing. We have um, Arcturus wool blankets. Any animal fibers are what you're gonna want for longevity and true warmth. This is raccoon, we got some fox, we got coyote, black beaver. Uh, this is a special throw that he made me. This is the um, beaver throw. Now we don't actually have any of these for sale. I just love that thing. That's, that's what I'm gonna be sleeping, sleeping on in the bush this year. We got some other uh, hides like caribou, things like that. But uh, I tell you, that shit's gonna fly out the door. Now we got some Outdoor Survival Canada jackets. That's the warmest coat in the world, guys. Minus 40, minus 60 for the mission variant. And this is a heavy loft goose down incredibly durable. This is not for fashionistas like that Canada Goose stuff. Canada Goose has become like, you know, the Prada or Tommy Hilfiger of, you know, winter coats. They, they, they make a few good coats, but just like the name that says, Outdoor Survival Canada is all about survival. 
coyote fur trim, really rugged exterior, lots of modern features, but built to keep you alive. They also make some of the warmest sleeping bags in the world. Now, right here, what we have going on is we're freeze drying some food. In fact, this batch is almost done here. 55 minutes left. We're gonna be making a video about that. We're always freeze drying stuff around here. I try to primarily freeze dry meats like chicken and uh, beef. I think that's what we're doing in there right now, stewing beef and chicken because uh, it's currency. It's gonna last for 25, 40 years. Look, in 20 years, the price of grain has nearly tripled or quadrupled. Oh, that's bright. And it's only gonna continue. That's our very messy gear review studio in the rear. We're working on some gear reviews and some pretty fascinating equipment. Um, I'll show you one thing, give you a sneak peek. This is the, I'm not gonna tell you what it is because it's not even really official yet, but this is gonna be a Tesla Powerwall killer. This is by far and away the most powerful home-based lithium generator system I've ever used. And uh, it's pretty incredible. And the price of lithium skyrocketing too. So I don't even know if this is going to be realized. We do have some lithium generators from a, a variety of companies, from Zendur, from Nightcore. And we also have some stuff coming in, a new generator from what is that company called? BioLite. They make the thermoelectric stoves and uh, they're, they're having a foray into the lithium generator market. People don't like when I call it a generator. Guys, a gas combustion engine is just a converter of energy, just like this is. You pair it with solar panels, they're all converters, but we call them generators. Energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but it can be converted. So this converts the sun's light into usable electricity, just like your soon to be paperweight gas guzzling gas generator is going to not only draw every marauder within earshot after the apocalypse, but it's going to be a giant paperweight when you run out of gas and it can no longer convert that gas into usable electricity. So we're going to have another video later out later tonight where we're going to talk about all of the nuclear war stuff that is looming. Uh, the United States have modified their nuclear doctrine, which permits them to engage in a first strike against a nuclear or non-nuclear adversary. Uh, they also, the Ukrainians had a visit uh, from the CIA director a couple days ago. And I wasn't aware of this at the time, but uh, that's very suspicious, isn't it? We have just a lot of developments on that front. We're going we're gonna to save that for later, but I just wanted to give you guys updates on the state of some things in the industry. What I'm seeing, of course, price hikes are constant at this period of time and they're only going to get worse and the great thing about preparedness gear is that it's a precious metal that you can use it's yes it's heavier it's not as dense a form of value as gold and silver which i would also encourage people to get into but uh it's it's just one of those things that no matter what happens you're always going to find a use for it and things like this are built to last a lifetime everything i've showed you today with the exception of the water bob, is built to last damn near forever. So maybe I'll show you a few more things. Why not? We're here. So what do we got over here? Where we got some snowshoes. We sell uh, MSR snowshoes. A bit of yuppie stuff, which are you know, we, we try not to do uh, a whole lot of yuppie stuff, but some yuppie stuff is good. Like some of the stuff you'd find at Mountain Equipment Co-op or Cabela's is actually quite good stuff. Now we're trying to expand our library. This is the conflicted board game. This is a great gift for any prepper. It's not just, you know, glorified snakes and ladders. This is actually a highly detailed game. It's very complex. It has great replay value. It's, they've just put so much work into the artwork and it's kind of like uh, Dungeons and Dragons for preppers, if you will. And you can also buy the individual decks. So they have all these different little decks so you can, uh, it's just a cool little thing, throw in your bug out bag, even as a, you know, something to do. Uh, we also have on, along those lines, magnetic chess, something great to put in your bug out bag or just emergency kit. Cause you know, if you ever get caught in the side of the road in the winter time and uh, you have no, no entertainment, that's something to, you know, pass the time if you're waiting to be extracted. 
Uh, this is another great book, Edible and Medicinal Wild Plants of Canada. Um, we saw a lot of the field and stream stuff, just a lot of reference material. So, oh, and I can't, I have to give a plug once again to the number one prepping book, the Survival Medicine Handbook. This should be in everybody's preparedness library. We're getting a huge influx of books coming in in the coming weeks. We also have uh, Right in the Rain products. This is waterproof copy paper. Okay, this is what a lot of, Right in the Rain is kind of the standard for writing paper for bug out bags because it's water resistant, all weather. Classic American product, comes in a variety of different types. What else should I show you? You know, one thing I would encourage everybody to get for winter is a pair of uh, Catula Micro Spikes. Look at that. They're the ultimate crampon crossover, traction, traction device crossover. Uh, just give you exceptional traction, especially in the backcountry. These are an absolute must if you're walking over icy terrain, which is not necessarily for an urban environment, but if you're in a crunchy, you know, gravel slash dirt, muddy environment that's iced over, perfect device. Anyways, guys, we're going to save more gear reviews for the future. We got tons of stuff that we want to share with you, but I just thought that I would uh, do a little walk and talk around the shop. Let me know what you're seeing with respect to price increases in your region. And if you need any of these items, check out the links in the description below. And uh, these things here, you guys seen it here first, we have a dedicated video planned with Fernand, the fur guy, where we're gonna go out and do some trapping of the actual animals, something we haven't done on this channel before. But uh, when we do that video, these will be gone within a few days. And honestly, they're probably gonna be gone after this, but pick them up where you can. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper